Hey everyone, this is Jennifer with DP Addiction Adventures and I am continuing my DP 101 series. We're gonna explore rivers, puckers, and bubbles. So I hope you like this and I will see you on the other side. We're gonna flip the phone around and let's get busy repairing our canvases. everyone you guys probably have noticed that the diamond painting guide and logbook is about to be released in print version to the public I just wanted to show you it does exist it is paper form and what I'm going to talk about in this video there are more details in the book if you would like to purchase it the link is down below. You can purchase from Rocky Nook, which is the publishing company, and get 40% off using the code DIAMONDS. Or you can purchase from Barnes & Noble or um, Amazon. It is an electronic form for Kindles, Nooks, and PDF. And it also is coming out at the end of October due to COVID. There's a delay. I apologize. I'm pulling my hair out. But it is coming. It got stuck in customs in a waiting period. And there is a lovely logbook in the back that you can use as well. So let's get down to why you're really watching this video. We're going to talk about rivers. Yes, there's rivers in diamond painting. Bubbles and puckers. What are rivers, bubbles, and puckers? Most of the time, 95, 99% of the time, you're gonna find these three attributes of terror in a diamond painting in a double-sided adhesive, which usually is an opaque cover. I have noticed that there are several companies that are switching over to poured glue, which most of the time has the clear cover or mounted uh, glue. And those two, you do not have to deal with rivers, bubbles, and puckers. However, here we go. So we're gonna dive in. Step one, prevention is much better than having to fix something. So when you receive a diamond painting with an opaque cover, it's actually now been shown that we, as we unbox, may be the reason the rivers come. Now the bubbles and puckers are different, but the rivers, let me explain what a river is first, and then I'll talk about preventing it and then fixing it. Okay. A river, if you can see right here, is where the double-sided adhesive kind of comes together and doesn't have a flat space to lay down, okay? This happens when you're pulling up the cover. The reason being is the adhesive is stuck to the cover and then stuck to the canvas. When we pull the cover up, we are actually pulling this glue, the adhesive tape, from the canvas. So the canvas is having this war with the glue of do I let it go, do I not? And then what happens is a river forms because the glue expands the adhesive and then when it goes to lay back down, there's no canvas room for it. So prevention wise, when you receive a canvas and it's rolled extremely tight, you're gonna wanna let it breathe so that the adhesive can expand and con um, contract organically, okay? So normally when I open these up, if you go to some of my unboxings, you'll see that I do this. I tend to let it kind of release itself and then I gently, you know, roll it a little bit so that it, the tight circle gets less and less and less. Then I look at my drills, maybe kit it up, and then I come back and I pull the adhesive off. I have noticed that that prevents many of the rivers. Another thing too is if you have a stash, 
Many times the rivers will come after you've already unboxed it. So you unbox it, it looks perfect, then you lay it flat, you put it away. Well, what happens is it expands and contrasts, you know, due to the weather temperature and different things, and you come back to do it and there's rivers everywhere. That's what happened to this one. This has been flat, it's been fine, it was really nice when I opened it, now it has rivers. Okay, so let's see what it takes to fix a river. To fix a river, you're going to want to have an X-Acto knife. I purchased this one off of Amazon, the link is down below. I did it because I wanted something that was a little bit heftier, but you can use a normal X-Acto knife. I know sometimes you can use a box cutter and let me show you what you do. So you find the river. Usually I find it because it, the light glares differently, all right? So we're going to work on this river right here. There's several different ways you can do it. Usually what I do is I try to follow the river and you're gonna go gently because you don't wanna cut through the canvas. You just wanna cut the glue, okay? So you're gonna go gently. I usually go down the length of the river. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna work on this. Then what I do is I do crisscross applesauce. So I kind of scrape gently across all the way down the length of the river and then I go the other way. What you are doing is you're allowing air to get under the glue so that when you press down, which I'm gonna put this back down, I'm going to take a tray, okay? And I'm just gonna rub, kind of like you're scratching a lottery ticket. Just gonna kind of what this does is it allows the air that was forming some of the river to come out. It allows your glue to expand and contrast. And it allows then the river to be flattened. All right, let's see how that worked. Okay, so you can see here the river is gone. Now there is, it shows where it was, but there's no river there. It's perfectly flat and it's taken care of. So that's a way that you can fix and I will go through and do all these rivers. I try to do it just a small section at a time so my arm doesn't get caught in anything, but that is a way to fix the rivers. Another thing too is once you have your opaque covers flat and your canvas flat, you don't wanna re-roll. Poured glue and mounted glue, you can re-roll, but due to how adhesive, um, double-sided adhesive, it's like tape, due to how it flexes, you're not gonna wanna re-roll it. So you're gonna wanna find a spot to lay it flat. Okay, so now what is a bubble and a pucker? You can tell puckers from looking on the back, okay? So basically what a pucker is, it's the worst thing that can happen to your canvas. It is the company was not paying attention and the canvas bent underneath the glue and then they laid the glue flat. So in the river is the glue comes up, the pucker is the canvas goes down, if that makes any sense. And then if you are to cut the glue, so the pucker can be released, you're not gonna have any glue on that canvas part because the can there's too much canvas, all right? I hope that made sense. So how do we do this? Okay, now this is a very bad canvas. I have pulled it out a couple times to do it and put it back away because I didn't wanna be stressed out. Here I have a pucker. You can see there that the canvas, the, the adhesive goes straight across and the canvas goes down, okay? 
if I treat it like I do a river, which is cutting the pucker, and then pulling, whoop, turn the light pad on, pulling the canvas tight, and then laying this flat, and using the same technique that I used on the river, it allows the pucker to be flat, but I'm not going to have any glue in that area. Okay, so the pucker whoop, is gone, okay? But there's going to be some symbols that aren't going to have glue, okay? Now sometimes you can get away with it because it's like on the line, but sometimes you can't. So what I recommend, let me pull it out for you just a second. So I recommend, I went and bought this quickie glue from Amazon, the link is down below. It's a pinpoint roller glue. And there's two in here, okay. And when you take it off, it's like an actual pin, okay? And use some scrap canvas here. You can see it leaves little dots of glue, okay? So then when you're diamond painting, you can actually just put a little bit of glue in the area that you're going to put drill on. All right, I'm gonna rub that off because I'm not drilling right now. The nice thing is, is this is blue. I don't know if it comes in white or not, but it's very, it's fine tip, which I really like, and it has a cap. And so I can't wait to use this on my, I can't think today. I can't wait to use this on my pucker. Gives me hope, okay? Another thing, the last thing is a bubble. What is a bubble? It's basically where there was air stuck between the canvas and the adhesive. Nothing's happening, there's enough glue, there's enough of everything that you need. And you're gonna do it the same way. Now this side, I checked it out before the video, this is actually a bubble, okay? Because the canvas is this, it's not bent up. So basically a bubble, you're just gonna puck pucker the air, let it get out, and you're gonna do the same thing. So it sounds like the way I fix it is pretty similar each time, but you just have to know how the canvas is going to treat you so that you are not surprised. All right, so now it's straight across. I'll be able to diamond paint and it'll be fine, okay? Even the back, you can see the divot has gone down. Normally the back, you're not gonna see a bubble. The back is more of a pucker, but I wanted to show you that. Bubbles, sometimes you don't have to. If it's on the edge, you can just pull your tray and pull the bubble towards the side. I prefer to do the poke and press. All right, so I hope this helped. I know many people get disappointed when they get rivers and they try to have the companies. If it's something small, fix it, move on, enjoy your diamond painting. If it's something that's gonna take you and stress you out, then I would recommend contacting the company and trying to get it replaced. If you want to see how to do this, examples, photos, step-by-step, step, beyond just this video, check out my book. There's lots of other tips and tricks in it, and I can't wait to continue on with my How to Diamond Paint series. So 
I hope you check out my other DP 101s and I can't wait to see your diamond paintings. If you wanna post them what you're working on, come on over to the Facebook Creative Craft Addictions. The link is down below for you as well. Make sure you answer all the questions so that we can approve you. So until next time, be blessed, take care. Love you all, bye-bye.